afternoon. Uh, now I would like to call uh, Dr. Balram Shukla, who is uh, a professor of Persian, professor of Sanskrit language in University of Delhi, and currently a fellow of uh, Indian Institute of Advanced Studies, Shimla. Uh, professor Balram Shukla is uh, an expert of Sanskrit language, but he speaks Persian much better than the Persian speakers themselves. And this is not something which I say. This is what Iranians say about him. Pro Pro Professor Shukla will be talking about lexical and morphological similarities between Sanskrit and Old Persian. So I would like to call you, sir. Please uh, continue with your speech and uh, your presentation of your article, sir. Benome Khudavan de Janu Khirad. Kazin Bertar and the Shibar Nagzaret. Miriava Sunai Padre Mujalagrahe. We can hear you, sir. Riasete Mohtera Mustad Girami Mushfitiman. Agay Chandr Shikar. Janavia Kaye Doctor Sanullah Shukrullahi. Vasadi de Digar. Nahuzar Girami. بسیار سعادت من خودم را می شمارم که در این سمینار منو برای ایرای مقاله ای دعوت کردن و اور اس بات کی کے لیے کہ خوشبختی ہے میرے لیے کہ یہ سوی سال گرہ جو عابدی صاحب کی ہے اس کے اس کے اپلکش میں اس سیمینار کا آیوجن کیا جا رہا ہے میں برسوں تک فارسی ڈپارٹمنٹ میں طالب علم رہا ہوں فارسی کا اور ہمارے جتنے اساتید ہیں وہ سب ان سب کے اساتید استاد جو ہیں وہ عابدی صاحب رہے ہیں تو فارسی سیکھنے کے کرم میں ان کے ان کے فضائل ان کے لطائف بھی ہم لوگوں کے ایک طرح سے گویا کہ ہمارے کورس کا حصہ جیسے تھے تو میں سوبھاگ شالی محسوس کرتا ہوں اپنے آپ کو کہ ان کے بارے اس اس اپلکش میں میں کچھ کہنا کہنے جا رہا ہوں سو دا ٹاپک آف مائی ٹاک از لیکسیکل مارفولوجیکل سملیرٹیز بٹوین سنسکرت اینڈ اولڈ پرشین دا ریلیشن شپ بٹوین اولڈ پرشین اینڈ سنسکرت ہیز بین نوٹیڈ اکراس کلچرل اینڈ لنگوسٹک ڈومینس ان اسپائٹ آف اے ہیوج گیپ آف آلموسٹ تھاؤزینڈ ایئرس and remarkable upheavals, modern Persian still bears astonishing affinities with Sanskrit uh, on phonetic, morphological, and other linguistic domains. This is possible because the root language of Sanskrit and Persian, which is modern Persian, share common origin. The intimate relationship between the root languages, uh, those are Old Persian and Vedic Sanskrit, is the main basis of the observed linguistic affinity. The Iranian language forms a significant subgroup of Indo-Iranian language family, which is one of the essential divisions of the Indo-European languages. We can chronologically organize the Iranian languages into three periods, Old Iranian, Middle Iranian, and New Iranian. Old Iranian includes two languages, of importance represented by old texts and inscriptions, including Old Persian and Avesta, respectively. These two constitute the oldest stratum of Iranian languages and hence called Old Iranian. Old Persian is, uh, Old Avestan is closely similar to the oldest Indic language, that is the language of the Vedas, and therefore, uh, should be dated to about the same time. Though many scholars are of the view that the tendency of prakritization visible in Avesta indicates that its time must be much later after the Vedas. So the Prakrit languages are the languages which evolved after the Vedic languages in classical Sanskrit. So the tendency of features uh, uh, which our middle into our languages beer is called prioritization. And the same thing we find in middle Iranian also. Uh, middle Iranian, even Avesta and 
uh, old Persian languages also bear these features. So we find uh, the features of prakritization in these languages. And prakritization is something which happened after Sanskrit languages. So the Avesta language and, um, and the uh, Middle Persian must be dated to after, uh, after the oldest Indo-Aryan, which is the Vedas, the uh, earliest uh, crust of the stratum of the Rig Veda. Uh, so, uh, and there are some, there are so many instances of prakritization uh, in uh, uh, Persian, in old Persian. So, however, several features of prakritization can be produced to propose that the process of prakritization should be borne in mind while studying the Indo-Iranian languages in general. So, I propose <coughs> that uh, just as Sanskrit, we know uh, we uh, chiefly know Sanskrit and uh, only uh, talk about Sanskrit. But we should take uh, the Prakrit languages also into consideration while studying uh, linguistically these Iranian languages. So Avesta has been identified into Gothic Avesta and younger Avesta, out of which younger Avesta displays similarity with the old Persian and therefore it should be contemporary of the former. Uh, its date may be uh, first half of the first millennium BCE. The study of Avesta and Old Persian languages had immensely benefited each other. The importance of Avesta language for antiquarian and philo philological researches gained much wider acceptance, chiefly as a result of the attempts uh, made by scholars to read cuneiform inscriptions found in Iran. Reading of these inscriptions in turn removed many prevalent doubts of that time. Relating to the genuineness of Avesta language, Sanskrit language owing to its uninterrupted and intact copious literary tradition. So there are three uh, very important features, specialities of Sanskrit language because of which it is very much beneficial for a linguistic study uh, of uh, Indo-European languages in general and Indo-Iranian languages in particular. And those three uh, important things are its ancientness, its copiousness, and its uninterrupted tradition. So the lexical opulence of Sanskrit has frequently been referred to by the philologists to unleash, understand, and even reconstruct forms of its cognate languages. This paper aims at displaying affinities between these two languages on the lexical and morphological levels. <clears throat> I'm skipping some portions because, uh, because of the paucity of the time. Uh, it endeavors to analyze similar forms of or structures in Sanskrit and Old Persian expressions uh, through the use of morpheme constructions. <clears throat> it is known to uh, all and sundry that Avesta language bears considerable affinity with Sanskrit to the extent that simply by applying some phonetic substitutions according to established law, it can be turned into intelligible Sanskrit. <laughs> Similar attempts have also been made to show the multidimensional linguistic affinities between Sanskrit and Old Persian. Endeavors have also been undertaken to transcribe cuneiform inscriptions into Avesta. So the Middle Persian has been written in cuneiform inscription, which is uh, said to be uh, invented in the Darius's time. But uh, modern scholars tried to write in Avesta script because uh, Avesta script is more intelligible. Khurshedji, Rustamji Kama, Dr. Geldner, and Shapurji Kawasji Hodiwala, uh, through their scholarship, have hugely contributed in this direction. <laughs> So I'm uh, going to uh, show some words, uh, interesting words found in inscriptions in Old Persian language, language which bear a stark resemblance with, uh, to Sanskrit derivatives on morphological and semantic dimensions. So can I share my screen?
please allow me to share my screen. Yes, you can. Yeah, thank you. Share. I think it is visible to all. Yes, it is. The first continue. First word I have undertaken uh, is Kshayasiyo. And all these uh, examples I have picked is from the Histan inscription uh, of Darius. He, Darius in his inscription uh, addresses himself as Kshayasiyo. And uh, this is the, hmm, should I? Uh, hmm, the word Kshayasiyo has been translated. Uh, this thing is uh, the, Deen Dabire, which is the script of Avestan script. And unfortunately, in our, my PowerPoint uh, presentation, some, some uh, characters are missing. So I uh, apologize for this. The word Shayatsiyo has been uh, translated as the king. In Sanskrit rendering of the inscription, the word has been assimilated with Kshatri of Sanskrit. The Kshatri, the, this term is ubiquitous in class, classical Sanskrit. And uh, there is nothing like Kshetra, but uh, scholars have reconstructed in Sanskrit that in Sanskrit its form uh, might have been like Kshetra. Because in Sanskrit, in Avesta, we find the word, word Kshayetu uh, in, in the meaning of the king. The word, according to the Sanskrit grammarians, may be der derived from the root Kshi. So the conjug uh, conjugational forms we have it, uh, in the Vedas, which means to dwell or to reign. Uh, this is a root frequently used in the Vedas. For instance, uh, from the second hymn of uh, uh, 12th month of the second hymn of the Rig Veda, you can see, yes, Shambaram Parvate Shukshiyantam. So this Kshiyantam is the root out of which this Kshayatsiyo is closely connected. Uh, similarly, in Avesta, we find yim, and this yim is always coupled with an adjective. So generally, we don't find it alone. Yamakshieto. So it is a compound, but uh, uh, in later languages, uh, the, the same phrase uh, in later Iranian languages found as jamshed, jamshid, as Iranians would pronounce it. So jamshed is. Uh, would mean the Yama, the king. So uh, it turned into a single proper noun. We feel that it is a single proper noun, but it is a uh, it is a, a compounded word. Uh, two words are there: Yama and uh, Kshayet. So in Pahlavi and modern position two, we find the word Shah. Shah is uh, the most important and uh, very popular word. Uh, which is direct evolute of this word. So, uh, and uh, the old Persian and Avista have another important cognate word that is Kshatra. Uh, actually, the, the word is Kshatra, and in Sanskrit, uh, in, in uh, old Persian or Avista, we find it as Kshatra because uh, fricativeness is the thing which is in abundant in uh, Iranian languages. And uh, in our Indic languages, Indo-Aryan, Indo we hardly found any fricative stop. So we have fricatives. Uh, for instance, sh, sh, s, h, etc. are fricatives, affricates, but not stops. These are not stops. So that uh, Persian languages, Iranian languages abound, uh, abound in it. So Kshatra is there, and uh, which means kingdom or sovereignty or province. The evolute of this word Shahr is abundantly used in medieval and modern Persian. This is why it, be, it is, it is uh, pronounced as Shahr and not Shahar. As in Urdu, we call it Shahar, yeah, or in Hindi, we call it Shahar. But actual pronunciation, pronunciation, of, pronunciation of this word is Shahr because it is closely connected with the kshatra. And tra, there is two conjuncts and uh, it is not uh, with the vowel. So uh, in Sanskrit, though the counterpart of this word is kshatra and it prominently means the ruling class with uh, kshatriya. But use of this word in compound kshatrapa 
indicates the existence of original meaning. Uh, about the word putra, uh, Professor uh, Hassan Abbas uh, said something. So the putra in Sanskrit uh, uh, is found as putro in Old Persian. And this is because when, when we find the conjuncts of, uh, uh, when we found the conjunct of ro and to, to becomes sa, which we denote by sita of, uh, uh, so, so in Old Persian, as it is vis visible in Putsra, it later converts into so and so changes into her. Other examples of this phenomenon are three. For instance, three becomes three, and after that it uh, uh, changes into so. So, say, say is actually tre. I mean, it is closely uh, related to three. Mitra, we know, Mitra, Mithra, and Mehr. Before it changed into Mehr, it must have, it might have been Misra. So we don't find it, but it is, it, it, it can be uh, constructed. Martya. This is a Vedic word, and in Avesta, in Old Persian, we find it Mashyo. And Chitra is a uh, interesting word. Chitra becomes Chehra, Chisra. It might have been Chitra, and after that, Chisra, and after that, Chehra. So Manu Chehra is there, is a word there. Chehra. Uh, and in Vedas also, Chitra. The, in, in modern Hindi, we find the word Chitra to mean uh, a picture. But in Vedas, Chitra means Chehra. So uh, the study of Old Persian and Avista languages is very, very important to unleash the meaning of even of the Vedas. Come, uh, so Pur and Pur and Pisar, two forms are still in use in Persian. Pur, before it became, it changed it to Pur, it must have been Pur. And Ha, as Ha got deleted, uh, following the law of compensation, there is a law of compensation in prakritization. Uh, the, the short Pu, may have been elongated to pur. So shahpur and other words we find. The word for grandson, grandson, napat, is specially used in Vedas. So we don't find it, it in classical Sanskrit. It is naptar in classical Sanskrit. And it is found the old in old Persian, it is found as napa. So the last ta is deleted. And the deletion of the last consonant is also a very... Uh, important feature of prakritization again so in classical sanskrit its presence is in the form of napta in the vedas it is used with similar connotation of a descendant and offspring for instance several vedic words are there apam napat for instance uh, the offspring of the water up is water that is ab urjo napat the napat the Nabir, that is called uh, nowadays in uh, Persian. So Urjo Napat, Divo Napat, Vimucho Napat, etc. Sanskrit grammarians provide its etymology as na, but Panini also has enumerated this word as Nabhran, Napan, Naveda, Na Satya, Namuchi, Nakul, Nakh, Napunsak, Nakshatra, Nakranaki, Shuprakritya, a long uh, aphorism he has composed. Besides Tad, we find Another pronoun in Sanskrit called Tyad. Nowadays in classical Sanskrit, we find only one uh, pronoun that is Tad. But in Vedas, we found another one that is Tyad. Uh, though both uh, denote the same meaning. Panini has enumerated is in Tyadi. And in Old Persian, but, but in Old Persian, we found Tye and Tya both. And in Vedas also, we find we find Tyad. For instance, in a mantra, where is, uh, that is very popular mantra, udutyam jata vedasam devam vahanti ketavah dashe vishvaya suryam. Another word is shab. For instance, rozo shab, which is uh, used in modern Persian, it was kshapa, and uh, in Sanskrit it is kshapa, as, as you can see here, it here. In old Persian, we encountered the word kshapa, uh, athahiya shapava, for instance, behistun, uh, inscription, one 
seven. Uh, the Sanskrit is very interesting word dost, which is uh, which uh, stands for the uh, term friend. The Sanskrit word just is its homogeneous word, and uh, uh, its uh, old Persian word uh, counterpart is zausto. So job, if you uh, if you find if you see the affrication. If you add affrication to j, it becomes z. See, uh, for instance, ustad and ustaz, two variants are there. So ustaz is nothing but the affrication of ustad. So if you uh, if you see the affrication, it is z. Uh, this Sanskrit word is grammatically derived from the word root jush. Jushaswa somam, for instance, in, in uh, Vedic Sanghitas which means to serve or to make happy. So it is uh, our dost is that who makes us happy. So in uh, another word is uh, starak, uh, which in Middle Persian is found as sitare. And after, after the processes, it, it becomes istare. So we also find the istare. Uh, and in modern classical Persian poetry, we also uh, we even today we, they use it. For instance, uh, Rumi uh, says that Mahgar shavad lagar is tare nami gardat. In Sanskrit, it is found as tara, used distinctly with feminine gender. Uh, further, in both Sanskrit and Old Persian, we have a word having almost similar sounds. That is stuna and stuna which means a pillar. In Middle Persian, after undergoing the process of prothesis, the word has transformed into istun, whereas in uh, modern Persian, we see this with an anaptixis after so, as sutun in Sanskrit, uh, in Sanskrit besides thuna and other variants, thaan is used. So, darkhanei ki sakf nadarat sutun mabash. Sutun is also there. In sutun, we find the Anaptics, anaptixis. And uh, uh, in Istun, we find prothesis. The old Persian Daru is Dar. I, I know that uh, time is very short. Uh, Aziz, why you have to tell me? Please continue. You are, uh, we are all learning something. So please continue. Thank you, sir. Uh, in old Persian, Daru is used to denote wood. Uh, Sanskrit has a similar cognate daru. Uh, this word is still uh, in use in modern Persian as dar, uh, but it means uh, the guillotine, the khansi ka takhta, possibly because in ancient days it was made up of wood. Sanskrit bhumi is seen, uh, seen as bhumi uh, in old Persian. In middle uh, Persian, it is uh, found as boom. In modern Persian too, it is visible, but not as a distinct word. It, it is found in compound status. So as, uh, uh, our asatids are there, they will correct me if I'm wrong. So Zad Boom is there, Zad Boom is motherland. And uh, uh, Navya is a word um, in Sanskrit, which means the water body, which can be navigated. Panini, uh, formulate a sutra for that. Nau and Nauka uh, is a crude form of this word, which means a boat in, Sanskrit, in Persian, Persian also is the, it is there. Uh, from uh, Nau, we find a word Navya. Nau vayodharam vishmul mul sita tulabhyas this is a long sutra has uh, aphorism uh, composed by, formulated by Panini. And uh, related to this Navya, we find in uh, ancient, in old Persian, Navya. That also, it is semantically uh, equal. Droh is Draug in uh, in, in old Persian. Now, very important thing, uh, an interesting thing, Sacha is there in the Vedas. It is an indeclinable. 
Indeclinable are the words which don't decline. They, there is no declension of these words. So, avyaya, which is called in uh, Sanskrit. So, sacha is an avyaya, uh, which is used in the Vedas. I, I didn't find in classical Sanskrit. It uses the words of, uh, it, it, it uh, adds the sense of ablative case to the word uh, to which it is added to. So it is found as hacha in, sans, in old Persian. It adds the sense of ablative case to the word before which it is used. In old and younger Avesta, this word is uh, found as in identical form. In Pahlavi, it is found as hach. And later in modern Persian, it is seen as az. So, uh, and it, the interesting thing is that in Vedic mantras also, it is used before the word. So generally, our uh, our shinasehai sarfi are used after the word, but sacha, just like in the Vedic mantras, is used before the word. So as as khanemi ayam, as khanemi ravam. So serving the semantic function of the ablative case. For instance, hacha uh, paruviyat, sacha purvata. These are from uh, Bihistun uh, uh, inscription. This is indeclinable is hardly seen in classical Sanskrit, but in Vedic Sanskrit, it is it is used in abound. So, for instance, tadvo gaya sute sacha, sacha you can see here, puruhutaya sattvane sham yadgavena shakine. So, the indeclinable abhi means towards the towards in Sanskrit, and it is equally interesting like sacha. It is generally used in, uh, to denote the sense of accusative case. In old Persian, this indeclinable is used as abhi. For instance, basta anayata abhi amam. Baad karke usko lao mere paas. Baddha aniyata abhi maam. So this same declinable may have been converted to be in modern Pers uh, Persian. Uh, where it is frequently used to denote the accusative, accusative case, Bekhane Miram, for instance. Dr. Uh, Saab, you can continue till 3.30. Sure. Oh. You have 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes left. Okay. okay. Saha is an indeclinable in Sanskrit, meaning with. Uh, in Vedas, we find the word in its primitive form, Sadha. So, uh, Sadha is used in Rig Veda, but in later Sanskrit, which is called classical Sanskrit, we don't find Sadha, we find Saha. So what is the difference between Sadha and Saha? The difference is that in Dha, the uh, stop uh, element of Dha, which is the actually, that got deleted and what we find uh, was, is Saha. Panini records two words where sadha instead of saha is used. Sadha maadas thayosh chandasi. Uh, elision of the stop element from dha has made it to change into her. But in old Iranian, the change is uh, in other direction. And that direction is, uh, unlike this case, we come across a tendency of inspiration, uh, inaspiration or de-aspiration of so dha is aspirated sound dha, which is not there in any of the Iranian languages. So dha becomes dha. Uh, for instance, Bharat, if they even today Iranians do not uh, pronounce, they cannot pronounce it. So of the aspirated sounds, thus the word is found as hada in old Persian. So this hada indicates sadha, which is not preserved even in classical Sanskrit, but it is preserved in old Persian. So the study of old, uh, old Persian and other Iranian languages are very important, rather essential to know not only the Sanskrit, but our uh, scriptures, our Vedas, the ancient, the most ancient languages of Indo-Aryan. Now, these are these were the some examples of lexical similarities. We uh, similarly can see the morphological similarities. We don't have enough time. So uh, the declension, we can see the declensions, 
the nominative there are eight cases uh, in sanskrit and avesta and old persian all these languages so you can see nominative cases the first case daraya bahu is dara and putra is putro and again this putro is uh, the process of prakritization because in prakrit we do not find visarga this is called visarga in sanskrit but except sanskrit no uh, language has uh, been able to preserve this this uh, archaic sound of visarga even in pali even in prakrit we do not find visarga uh, similarly we do not find visarga in uh, Uh, in avesta or in old persian or uh, in middle persian so it becomes o in sanskrit in sanskrit also in pali also it becomes o for instance buddha becomes buddho putra becomes putro uh, putto sorry martya becomes masho in old persian the accusative case is dvitiya karak which is karma karak bhagam is bagam instrumental is a third this is rochi bhi uh, is rauchi bish again you can uh, you can see that this uh, this visarg is not there visarg has been changed to sh genitive uh, you can see interestingly because it is the same only sa becomes h arsham is a king who is uh, perhaps the father of darius to so arsham is Ars- arshamasya is arshamahya kuro is kurosh locative also you can see uh, in pronounce also aham is azam ya or adam in old persian azam in avesta asmakam is ahmakam uh, vayam is vayam in conjugation means uh, the dhatu roop uh, the verbal forms also you can say the immense similarities both languages bear adhari zadari abhavam is abhavam past tenses present also smasi we don't find uh, smasi in classical sanskrit but smasi is there uh, in 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 vedic sanskrit and in avesta uh, and old persian uh, obviously smasi is smaha in uh, uh classical sanskrit but mahi is in old persian asmi this is these things are uh, present tense uh, the instances of present tense krnosh is kunvahi prayih is peradiya krnot is kunaut tav professor sahab i think uh, uh, professor bilkis husaini wants to ask a question she has uh, raised her hand ma'am do you have something to say I don't think I so. Learn a lot. Please continue. <laughs> Please continue. Okay, so uh, now I'm concluding it. There are so many uh, things left. For instance, nominal, uh, secondary nominal bases, which is called tadhit in Sanskrit. So secondary nominal suffixes are generally derived uh, from verbal uh, derivatives. both sanskrit and old persian share several types of these kinds of bases a few of them are discussed here uh, i will discuss i will be discussing so suffix ka is there and ka has so many shades of meaning and all shades of meaning is preserved in persian this is uh, this is uh, a strange thing for instance ari ka ari ari is uh, a foe enemy and if you Uh, add ka to that it it becomes arika and it uh, yields the same meaning so uh, this ka is widely used in almost all indo iranian languages and even in modern indian la- uh, indian languages uh, with several senses to denote some of them which are common uh, is as arika so this ka in later development changes into ga and thereafter into ha for instance bachche uh but if you uh, make a plural of it it becomes bachchegan to ye ga kahan se aaya bachchegan mein ga actually wo ha jo hua hai bachche mein that uh, originally initially was ka 
we still witness this suffix in plural form. Conclusion of this paper. So while discussing between Sanskrit and Old Persian, it should uh, be borne in mind that regarding the correct reading of several inscriptional words, instead of Dausta, Tolman in his lexicon reads it Agartha. Similarly, instead of Putro, some scholars read Pusso. In spite of these readings, it's clear from the above discussion that old Persian language bears affinities with Sanskrit. Uh, to the extent of its status. Old Persian Vedic model feature of old Indo-Aryan, which we seldom find even in classical Sanskrit. These old Iranian usages may assist us in determining purport of the mantra many occasions of the Vedas. For instance, the word dasyu, which is which means decoit in Sanskrit. But it, all, it, it can also mean desh, country or region, because it has been used in Behistun uh, inscription in this meaning only. Besides this, we find the Sanskrit asan, which is uh, the past tense of... Dr. Sir, one minute remaining. Sure, I'm just concluding it, sir. Pointing the fact that the root as might also have been used in Atmanepada, which now is not in vogue in classical Sanskrit. Rish gatau is a root which in uh, Sanskrit is only found in verbal derivatives, which is primary nominal basis, for instance, Rishi, and hardly seen in verbal conjugations. But in Old Persian, we find the conjugation, uh, means verbal, verbal forms of this root used. For instance, Adam Arsham Adam, Aham Arsham Madam, Aham Arsham Madam means I went to media, uh, media. Thus, we, the comparative study of both languages would be very helpful in achieving a comprehensive linguistic understanding of both the languages. In the end, uh, I thank all my teachers from Delhi University, Persian Department, Professor Chandrasekhar, Professor Husseini, Professor Rajendra Kumar and others, uh, who introduced me to the mesmerizing world of Persian poetry and uh, Persian knowledge base. I especially thank Dr. Anjali Duhan, uh, my colleague at IIA Shimla for her valuable comments on uh, the earlier draft of this paper and uh, uh, thanks all. Dhaniwad. Thank you very much Dr. Shukla. It was a brilliant uh, paper but we hope we would have had more uh, time for you to present it in detail. And there can also be uh, a conference or a seminar regarding the same, the topic that you discussed can be discussed in the form of a different seminar. Uh, Very well done, Shukla. Many, contrib thanks a lot, sir. Many contributions. Thanks. thanks a lot, sir.